welcome to Customs Trade District, coming to you live from the Nigeria Customs Service Headquarters here in Abuja. And this is the first episode of the program. And Customs Trade District is that one program that brings you up to speed with trends, global trends, as far as the world of business is concerned. And of course, the activities of the Nigeria Custom Service. My name is Chi Amaka Enendu. Thank you for joining us. And today we shall be focusing on Nigeria's diplomatic ties with India. And it is my honor to have or to introduce to you our guest in today's edition of the program, who is none other than the Indian High Commissioner to Nigeria. He is Sri Bala Subramanian, and he will be joining me to discuss issues around Nigeria and Indian diplomatic ties. But first of all, let's go on a short break, and when we come back, the discussion will continue. Welcome back and this is still Customs Trade District coming to you from the Nigeria Customs Service Headquarters and I have my guest right here with me. So my guest is the Indian High Commissioner to Nigeria. He is um, Sri Bala Subramanian and like I said before we shall be discussing uh, issues around the Nigeria Indian diplomatic ties. Hello sir, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much and uh, Namaskar, good afternoon. Namaskar. Namaskar. <laughs> what is that? Namaskar is uh, good afternoon or it is hello. Oh, uh, hello. A formal hello in Indian language, uh, Hindi, it is Namaskar. In, uh, uh, it is actually good afternoon, good, uh, good morning. It can, it can be applied to all parts, morning, afternoon, night, anytime. Okay, Namaskar to you too. Namaskar, thank you. And through okay. you, I am very happy to meet your viewers and uh, uh, very warm greetings from India to all the viewers of this uh, television uh, channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are you, this is your first visit to Nigeria? This is my first visit to Nigeria. I'm here just one month old mm, in Nigeria. How, and has, how has it been so far? How are you adapting to the Nigerian uh, lifestyle? It has been excellent for me. This is a choice that I had made to come over to Nigeria as my first ambassadorial assignment from India. And I'm very happy that I have chosen this. People have been really warm, friendly, and helpful and in the past about one month my wife and I who are here together since last July uh, this July sorry uh, we have we are already feeling at home mm. thank you mm. you're welcome you're welcome sir so let's go into discussions around trade and diplomatic ties between Nigeria and India so of course um, there are predictions that India will you know soon become the world's largest, uh, fifth largest economy. And all of these discussions have gone on for quite a while, talking about India having a GDP of roughly five trillion dollars. Uh, what, in your view, is driving that growth and how uh, possible is that? Uh, it certainly is possible. The government has been making all out efforts in terms of improving the conditions of our people through development of economy. Presently, India's economy stands somewhere about uh, a little more than 3.2 billion, uh, 3.2 trillion dollars, and uh, through various activities and uh, uh, works that the government has done, including making the e doing ease of business in India to be more comfortable, they have uh, taken out many of the archaic um, uh, legislations and rules and regulations which were hindering the trade development between. India and other countries, they have, re, uh, they have actually liberalized most of them. Uh, as I was telling you, the ease of doing business, we have certainly grown up very high in the index. There is still a lot of uh, way to go, but still we are in the process of doing it. Plus, as you would perhaps have noted that uh, the uh, mechanical part of it in terms of agricultural development, in terms of manufacturing, in terms of setting up of new unicorns which are coming up in a large way, the startup businesses. So there's an all round encouragement for uh, doing business with India and that those are bearing fruits and we are quite confident that as our Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi had uh, said, we would certainly be looking forward to reaching the 5 trillion target soon. Indeed, indeed. And still on ease of doing business. I understand that India and Nigeria have over the, over 
many years now you had um, a good trade relationship especially uh, we saw that India has maintained its t top five position when it comes to international trade in Nigeria I mean uh, last year we saw uh, Nigeria hit as high as 14.95 billion dollars just in one year can you speak to issues around that and uh, what are the three top imports that India has imported from Nigeria uh, you are absolutely right. After the COVID period where there was a slack in the trade between our two countries in 2021, that is 2020-2021, we have uh, reached a trade of about $14.95 billion, of which more than $10 billion worth of oil we have imported from Nigeria. And on non-oil sector, the mineral oils, nuts and uh, other resources we have been uh, importing from Nigeria which uh, constitute to roughly about $1 billion and we export about $4 billion worth of uh, material from India. Mm -hmm. So uh, the relationship has always been strong, uh, has been growing sub subsequently and post-COVID it has certainly strengthened up mm -hmm. and we hope to achieve this, to, to keep this momentum up and achieve more in our bilateral trade relations. Mm, indeed. I'm, I'm very happy you made mention of the COVID-19 situation. I mean, the years 2020, 2021 were quite unprecedented, especially in the world of business. And I understand that we have over 135 Indian companies currently operating in Nigeria. How would you say those businesses were affected by the COVID-19 situation? Uh, both yes and no. Uh, you rightly pointed out that COVID-19 had affected and it had affected the whole of the world together. There, mm -hmm. there has been a complete changeover in the mindset and how the outlook of the whole world in doing businesses and in interacting with people also. As soon as the COVID hit and uh, when the lockdown was uh, put in place, Government of India had also started this Vande Bharat, which is a um, uh, which is a flight movement. When everything stopped, we had organized flights to take Indians out of uh, various countries and also send foreigners who were stranded in India to their own countries. It was one of the largest exercises that we did. I can say that about 8,000 Indian nationals who were stranded here in Nigeria were also taken back in this Vande Bharat thing. So our 135 companies which are here and I am very happy and proud to say that they are almost in every part of Nigeria mm. in all the 36 states and, and FCT. Mm. So they have certainly been affected in a way that uh, there had been reduction in uh, the volume of trade that they were doing, the production that they had been doing earlier was reduced. But they are all coming back and uh, we are happy to note that it is, uh, they are very resilient and they have succeeded in doing so. Well, good, good to hear that. Let's go on a short break and when we come back, the discussion will continue. Welcome back and this is Teal Customs Trade District coming to you from the Nigeria Customs Service headquarters. So you just visited the CGC and of course there were discussions around trade, trade facilitation and the likes. So from your point of view, what is the level of customs, customs um, relationship, talking about the Indian customs and the Nigeria Customs Service, how is that sector ferry? My visit to the customs headquarters has been extremely wonderful in the sense that the Comptroller General of Customs had received me very warmly and has assured me of full cooperation for improving trade relations between India and Nigeria. I'm so happy to hear that and we on our part would also be equally committed to increasing this cooperation. Mm. Um, presently, uh, the customs cooperation has always been quite smooth and we have not faced any problem. And whenever there have been hitches, because businesses take place in different uh, directions and when there are hitches, we have been able to consult each other and through cooperation sort out all the material, all the in, uh, problems that we had faced, all the hurdles, I wouldn't say problems, mm -hmm. hurdles and uh, I'm thankful for the cooperation from the Nigerian customs. We presently do have a Customs Matters uh, Memorandum of Understanding on Customs Matters uh, which, which we are negotiating uh, between India and Nigeria and we hope to have that thing concluded in the very near future. Mm. 
and which would which i am sure would further strengthen our cooperation indeed indeed and in other um, areas such as uh, fintech and um, technology pharmaceuticals and solar or renewable energy as well india is said to be uh, one of the highest fintech um, countries or one of the countries that seem to have adopted fintech in recent times how can nigeria follow suit and um, or how can that growth impact in nigeria I'm once again uh, wanting to say that you have very rightly pointed out the growth of fintech and the startups in India. Using fintech and IOD, that IoT, Internet of Things, uh, there have been more than hundred unicorns which have come up in India in the past two in the past five years, which means that each of those unicorns have more than one billion dollars worth of investment that have been put into. Uh, their system which uses the uh, internet for their startup whether it is supply of fruits or supply of food items or supply of various things uh, they have brought in technology to help resolve most of the issues that the uh, the uh, indian market had been facing indian people were wanting so that is something which which is worth emulating and we would be more than happy in going in for capacity building in training people uh, in Nigeria also. Mm -hmm. Capacity building has been one of the stronger points of relationship between India and Nigeria. And as I was just mentioning to the Comptroller uh, of uh, Customs also, we have had this cooperation from 1958 mm -hmm. actually when uh, India started uh, its diplomatic presence in Nigeria two years before your independence in 1960. Since then, training has been part and parcel and a major component of the relationship. So we would be more than happy to extend this kind of cooperation in terms of capacity building and training in startups and fintech and other areas which would be of more interest to the Nigerian businesses. Mm. Uh, we can work out something to certainly uh, cooperate in this direction. Mm. Okay, still on the customs to customs relationship, what ways would you suggest we develop trade you know, between both countries? In addition to whatever I have been just saying, there is also this Nigeria-India Business Council which has been recently set up during the visit of uh, His Excellency Mr. Oniyama, the Foreign Minister of Nigeria to India in the month of April 2022. He had uh, started this uh, cooperation between Indian businesses and Nigerian businesses under a forum which is called as the Nigeria-India Business Forum and that council they have set up a council subsequently. Mm -hmm. That council is meeting up on 22nd and 23rd of uh, uh, August in uh, Transcorp Hilton. Uh, my minister, Mr. Uh, v. Murli an Honorable Minister of State for External Affairs, Mr. V. Murli will be joining in from India for inaugurating this, uh, this uh, uh, NIBC, as they call it, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, along with um, His Excellency Mr. Oniyama and His Excellency the Vice President of uh, Nigeria also. So I'm sure that the businesses which are coming in, more than 40, 45 of them I'm, I'm told are coming in from India, along with their counterparts would be looking at various other options also of uh, cooperation apart from the traditional fields of manufacturing and trade that happens between India and Nigeria. And I'm sure this NIBC will open up new vistas and uh, create opportunities for both our sides to cooperate further. Uh, and, and still talking about businesses, I'm sure you are in talks with the Indian business community here. Yes. So far, what have the feedbacks been about ease of doing business in Nigeria? As I told you, I'm just one month old in Nigeria mm -hmm. and my compatriots who have been here, they have been here for decades. They have actually made Nigeria their home and they are so comfortable in Nigeria doing businesses that they have told me in the past one month itself that how comfortable they have been here, how welcoming has the Nigerian have the Nigerian authorities been, how friendly are the Nigerian people and how good their workers are over here and the kind of cooperation that they are having with them. Yes, certainly every business will have some issues from time to time, but with positive attitude and cooperation from the government authorities, I'm sure these would also be sorted out and they are quite happy doing businesses in India and that is why we have more than $19.3 billion worth of investment from in by Indian companies from India into Nigeria over the past 30-40 years and they are quite happy in continuing this relationship. Mm.
Indeed. Um, I mean, like you said, India has had this relationship with Nigeria even before Nigeria's um, independence. I'm talking about independence. Recently, India celebrated its 76th independence. So happy independence to, 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 to India. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. And just before you go, how can this development, talking about the, um, India's um, independence, how would it um, benefit you know, countries generally with Nigeria also involved? Um, if I have to go back a little in history, India immediately after it came out of uh, the colonial rule had been working with various other countries to break the shackles of colonialism. So right from beginning we have been an outward looking uh, country in which, which had helped other countries to come out of colonialism and then start developing. In, initially, we were also seeking assistance from outside in terms of development because after the colonial rule, we had a problem in terms of our economy was down. Our people were, uh, the number of people who were illiterate were far below the, uh, was very, uh, the illiteracy was quite high and so on and so forth. So we had to go in for development. And as we developed in 50s and 60s, we started also understanding that uh, the concept of Vasudeva Kudumbakam, which is a Sanskrit word, which means whole world is one family. That is the principle under which India has been uh, embarking on the, uh, on the road of development. Mm -hmm. And it had never been alone. It had extended the South-South cooperation to various other countries, immediate neighborhood and to Africa and so on and so forth. So we have been always in the forefront of uh, developing together, mm. which has been the motto of Vasudeva Kudumbakam. And so we would certainly continue in that direction. And uh, uh, we have been, uh, I think we would be ready to see in whichever manner Nigeria would be interested and uh, wanting it, whatever the requirements of Nigeria, with Africa first and Nigeria first. In Our model is to not impose something on any country, but also to understand what the country needs and try and modify our developmental model to that particular thing. Okay. So we would be certainly happy in continuing that direction. India-Africa Forum Summit is one such uh, initiative that Government of India had undertaken, wherein uh, we have had um, a series of such meetings and we would certainly look forward to continuing this cooperation under India-Africa Forum Summit also, as well as bilaterally between India and Nigeria. Mm. Okay, just before we go, is there any message you'd like to put out there for the Indian community and Nigerians too? You have been really very warm and friendly and thank you for this hospitality. I would be more than happy to try and do my best to uh, make our lives, both Indian compatriots who are here and to uh, my Nigerian friends over here, to strengthen the relationship between India and Nigeria in whatever fields that is possible for both the countries to cooperate with. Thank you and Namaskar. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. Thank you. I have been speaking with the Indian High Commissioner at Sioux, Nigeria, Shri Bala Subramanian, and he has been speaking extensively to issues around trade, um, India and Nigeria, trade relationships, and other issues as well. But unfortunately, this is where we draw the curtains on this episode of the program. This is Customs Trade District. My name is Chi Amaka, and then do bye for now. <laughs>